You know, growing up, one of my favorite games was bingo. How many of you like bingo? Yeah. Okay, and I thought about from the word of God, you know, bingo comes with everything, but you had to get, when they were calling uh, a B, A, I, G, whatever it was, you had to make sure you had those numbers, right? right. Then you put a little marker on that, and then when you got it horizontal, diagonal, or cover the whole board or whatever, you would holler out what? Bingo. bingo. So I thought bingo means the B is for believe. Believe means to accept something as true. And we're talking about God's word, accepting God's word is true. But before we get there, you know what? I just want to thank the Voices of Praise. They do a tremendous job. Dr. Leroy Wesley and all of the team. Give them a big hand clap. Thank God, thank God, thank God. So, bingo. I uh, believe to accept something as true. Believe. When you believe, we should believe the word of God. Amen. To as many as receive him, you got to believe that Jesus is the son of God. Amen. Then I is to initiate, to cause a process to begin, to start something. How many of you uh, know if you're in a business, if you're in school or whatever, you need to learn to be an initiator, to start something, Amen. to get something going? And then in means to nurture. The word nurture means to care for, to encourage the growth or development of something. To care for, to encourage the growth or development of something. And then we have God. You know, the word says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Everything starts with God. Amen. You know, in Genesis 1-1, everything starts with him. He's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. So in the word capital G-O-D, you see the word go, and you also see the word do. So God wants us to go forth and do what he's told us to do, believe him, to develop, to start something. And then he told us to do, as in James 1.22, to be a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. And then O is for obey to carry out the instruction or command, to comply, to submit to the authority of. That's what the word obey means. Amen. To carry out the instructions or the commands of, to comply, or to submit to the authority of. So that's what we have to do in our lives. We have to learn to obey. So we're gonna talk about the bingo zone. You know, being in the bingo zone, believing God, initiating and starting things in our lives and also nurturing, developing what God has done for us and put in his word for us. And then God, trusting God at all costs. No matter what the circumstances look like, you're going to stand on the word of God because God will find out in our lesson today is from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. He won't lie to you. He won't deceive you. He won't betray you. God is for real. Tell your neighbor, God is for real. And then obey, you know, obeying his word because obedience to God is to help us as believers, right? So being in the bingo zone uh, is being committed. How many of you know commitment is so important? Amen. What, what is commitment? Commitment is the state of quality of being dedicated to a cause. The state of quality of being dedicated to a cause. It's a pledge or an undertaking or engaging an obligation that restricts freedom of action. Right. So when you are committed, you've heard it, the more committed you are, the fewer options you have. Amen. If you are committed to be a good student, your option of staying at home and playing hooky, you don't have those options because you are committed to be a good student, right? If you are committed, uh, it's certain things you do, certain things you don't do. Amen. What about uh, Mr. LeBron James Amen. with the L.A. Lakers, right? Yeah. He's committed to playing the game of basketball. Amen. So I'm sure his options of doing other things, his uh, nutrition, his exercise, all has to be in line to keep him in the shape because he's 39 years old, but I just heard that he made 40,000 points. Amen. He's the highest scoring uh, player in basketball. Amen. And I think that's commendable, Amen. right? Amen. 
And you know, that's the kind of God that we serve. He wants us to start something, initiate something, to obey his word, because he's not trying to get something for us. He's trying to get something to us, yeah. from us rather. He's trying to get something to us. Amen. Let's look at Luke chapter 5. Uh, talks about when it came to pass, the people press upon Jesus to hear the word. So we got to be in that uh, commitment zone so we can hear the word. Get where the word is being taught or preached. And he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. When we were in Israel, we saw that. Awesome. And saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them, and they were washing their nets. They're like, we've been out here all night. We hadn't caught anything. It's time to wash our nets and go home. How many of you like fishing? Amen. How many of you been fishing? Amen. Okay. They said I talk too much. Don't come back out here to fish. Right? <laughs> Because I could catch it. I didn't want to get it off the hook. I didn't want to put the bait on it. So you might as well just stay at home and go in the kitchen and get ready to clean them. And I'm like, I think it would have been better just to stay out there and shut up, right? And, you know, and go that way. And verse 3 says, and he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's. Isn't it amazing? Jesus knows just whose ship to go into. And prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. See, can God use something that you have to get his word over to other people Amen. that he wants to bless? Verse 4, now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets, plural, for a drought. And verse 5, we're in Luke 5 and, and, and verse 5. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night. Like Jesus didn't know they'd been out there all night. You know, he sees all, he knows all, right? But he said, we've been out here all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Singular. See, Jesus said, let down your nets, plural. But he said, I'll just... Let me play it safe and just let down the net. Amen. You know, how many times in our lives Jesus is trying to get to us a full supply, something that's lacking, something that you haven't discovered that will happen in your life. He's trying to make it happen for you, but we're going to halfway obey him. You know, he said, let down your nets, plural, and he just let down his net. Well, let's just see what happens. And when they had done this, they enclose a great multitude of fish, and their nets break. Isn't it good to know that God knows how to break the net? He's not the God of just enough, but he's the God of more than enough. Amen. El Shaddai, amen. amen. Right. They've been out there all night, hadn't caught anything. But you know what? They might have known how to fish. They might have known how to fish. But Jesus knew where the fish were. Amen. And I believe in your life the things that you think are lacking, Jesus knows the answers to every problem, solution to all your problems, all your ills, all your woes. Jesus knows how to get it done. Right? Whew, glory be to God. So whatever you're going through, you're looking for a job. Maybe we have students looking for a summer job and you believe in God. To, let me just finish grade I'm in to get promoted to the next grade. If you're a senior, you just want to get accepted to that college of your choice, right? right. Whatever it is you believe in God for, God wants to do it for us. He's on our side. Amen. And if God is for us, he said, who can be against us? Amen. And their nets break. And they beckon to their partners. See, when God blesses you with more than enough, with all sufficiency in your life, he wants you to share with somebody else. Amen. So they call this partners. Isn't it, isn't it good to know that you can have partners? Amen. They're not only partners in ministry. It could be a partner in your business, a partner in your venture that you are looking to go into. Believe God for partners that will help you, right? Amen. And enhance what you're trying to do. And they beckon to their partners, which were in the other ship. They should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. So they got a boat sinking load of fish. So God knows how to do it big time. Tell your neighbor, God is more than enough. And I love it because they thought Jesus was just coming to help them do that. And that's one area. But he also said in verse, he said, fear not. 
10. From henceforth, thou shalt catch men. He said, I'm going to make you a fisherman of men. And Jesus did the miracle, and they know that they left their businesses, and even though they knew how to fish and all of that, they left all that to follow Jesus. Amen. Right? Amen. They were in the commitment zone. You know, Jesus is committed to us. Amen. You know, he honors his word to perform it in our lives. Yes. The Bible says in Jeremiah that he hastens to perform our word. We're talking about the commitment zone. You're committed. More people were told to quit of great accomplishments than you might want to know in life. People probably told you to quit. You ought to just drop out of school. Mom and daddy didn't go. You ought to stop. Right? Amen. Big daddy and them quit. They didn't have any education. Why are you going to college? A lot of times people try to discourage you to quit. And we look at Benjamin Franklin, you know, uh, experimented with lightning, right, for electricity. People told him to quit. Say, so you, you out there just wasting your time. Just quit. Just give up. But thank God he didn't quit because we're enjoying electricity today. Amen. What about Thomas Edison? Nearly a thousand experiments, but he didn't quit. What if he stopped at 999, right? But he kept going until he discovered the light bulb. Then we talk about Orville and Wilbur Wright. They spent a lot of their time and energy trying to get an airplane to fly. You know, I'm sure with people walking in the carriages and horses back in the day, this was like, what? In the early 1900s, you know, working on an airplane, you know? Some people say if God had intended us to fly, he would have given us wings. You've heard that before, right? But he gives us innovations, and those are creative ideas and solutions. Uh, you can go from here to uh, L.A. or here to New York or to Chicago in a few hours versus having to use a horse and buggy, right, or a bicycle or a carriage or something like that. But people told Orville to quit, told Wilbur, hey, y'all just quit. But thank God they did not quit. And what about George Washington Carver? This African-American inventor, they told him to quit. Why are you looking at even a peanut? You know, let us just live with what we have right now. But no, he was a persevering man. He looked at all the ways he could help not only his people, but humanity at large. So thank God he did not quit and discovered so many uses of the peanut. Amen. What about Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States? He didn't quit. He ran for state legislature and lost. He failed at business, spent 17 years paying off a of debt because he failed at business. He ran for Congress and lost. He ran for the Senate and lost. But finally, because he didn't quit, he became the 16th president of the United States. Glory. Amen? Amen? What about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? Glory. I'm sure people told him, you need to stay at home. They're bombing your property. They're trying to destroy you. They're trying to do this to you. You need to quit. But thank God he persevered to not only a uh, nonviolence of civil rights advocate, but justice for all people. The poor people, everybody, right? Because he believed in that. So the key to your success to unlock any door is commitment. Amen. You can be talented. You can have charisma. You can uh, have intellect. But if you're not committed, you're not going to accomplish very much. Right? right? If you're a sports person, an athlete, a runner, a wh wh whoever you are, if you're not going to be committed to your uh, trade or to your skill or your talent, right. where are you going with it? Amen. Right? Amen. You have to be commitment in the morning when you get up to go to school. Amen. You know you're going to pray and worship and thank God that you're up. You wasn't plugged into a wall or anything. Mm -hmm. Being grateful is a part of commitment. Right? right? So a lot of times quitters look at other people that are persevering to make things happen. 
And that's what we have to do in our lives. I remember growing up, they wanted us to take piano lessons. And I was one of the ones, you, you're going to take piano lessons. Well, you know, we didn't have a piano. Wasn't even close to a piano. I had to walk about a mile to use a neighbor's piano. And I'm like, hmm, I don't like that. You know, I want to be out playing or doing drama, doing something else. I was not committed. Therefore, it opened the door for me to do what? Quit. How many of you know quitters never win and winners never quit? Amen. So, but I was one of those, I quit on taking piano lessons. Can't play. Now, a pastor can. Amen. We had a good word this morning. Amen. But you have to be committed in life to whatever your skills, goals, talents, and abilities are. Amen. That's good. You know, a lot of times we go, oh, I just got a bad break. Oh, I just came from a dysfunctional family. Oh, I just had all these problems growing up. But you know what? A lot of times it's just a failure to commit to your trade or your uh, given role or whatever it is you want. The level of your determination to accomplish your goal is measured by what it takes to make you quit. So whatever you're trying to quit at, you're not that determined to make it happen. Amen. So you create your own roadblocks and setbacks when you're not committed. Amen. And it was easy to blame everybody else for looking in the mirror. Amen. It's not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, Amen. that need to be committed and get in that zone of commitment. Amen. Every great goal has a price tag to it. You know, you go to the store and you look at the no brand shoes. How I many, yeah, I remember growing up with no brand stuff. Didn't have the, you know, heel finger, or didn't have the Gucci or the Louis Vuitton, those things, right? Amen. Or whatever your brand, bands, or whatever it is. You just had the no name brands. Amen. It was a little different price from those than, say, a name brand. The all-stars cost a little bit more than the no-name brands. Or maybe you went to the grocery store. I remember the Shasta uh, Colas. They were real big. I'm like, who could drink that? I knew this person that just sit down. He could drink the whole. I, it must have been two liters. It was a no-name brand. I thought, hmm, I like the Coke one better. But I guess their pocketbook said, or their wallet, we got to get the Shasta. Right? Whatever it was, you know, that price tag told you a lot. So every great goal that you have in life has a price tag. The greater the job, the higher the price. And it's called commitment. We talked a few minutes ago about Mr. LeBron James and what he's done. I'm sure to get that commitment, that 40,000 points, that was a lot of price tag on that. And you look at the players that just quit, maybe they got in a fight, or maybe they got tired of practice and didn't want to go to practice, and they just dropped out. They quit. Amen. You know, I saw this clip one time that Stephen A. Smith had done on these professional athletes, and he said, guess what? You're going to spend all that time, all that energy to get to the NBA or get to whatever your sports, a, a major league baseball or football or NFL or whatever, and you're going to let a joint derail you to go back to the hood or go back to wherever you came from? No way, Jose. He said, no, you got to wake up and know that your decisions make you. But guess what? You make your decisions. So when you're in a zone of commitment, the more committed you are, the fewer options you have. And you have to learn that there's a price tag. There's a, a price that you have to pay for Amen. commitment. Amen. What does commitment do? Commitment is like a motivator. It keeps you moving towards your goal. Because you know people right now, don't call their names, <laughs> even if, if it's you, right? Amen. That are not committed to anything. Amen. You do something in the community. Maybe there's a project to help people. Well, I'll be there. And you're looking around for them. Where? They said they were going to be there. Where are they? They're not committed in their church. Can I get an amen? amen. Yay! Amen. Maybe you want to help feed the hungry, right? right. You want to go share your testimony, whether it's in the prison or whether it's in the community, the detention center, or whatever, but people are not committed. Amen. You got to love people. Amen. And I think about John 3.16, if God so loved us, 
He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should have what? Life. Everlasting life. And thank God the belief in something that we can have, to be in that commitment zone, Amen. to be able to place that mark and say bingo. Amen. I mean, that's what it's going to take. We're living in a day, you see all the distractions that are out here. Yeah. It takes something to be committed. Yeah, that's good. The word of God says, while we were yet sinners, yeah. Jesus died for us. Thank you, Lord. you may be disappointed by what people, you know, do to you or discourage you or whatever. But when you're committed, you're looking at that price tag, I'm going on. Amen. I like what Dr. King said when he said, if you can't run, you walk. If you can't fly, you run. If you can't run, you walk. If you can't walk, then you crawl. But he said, whatever you do, keep going forward. Amen. Tell your neighbor, we got to keep going forward. You don't let your setbacks cause you to take a step back. Why? Because you know God is preparing your comeback. Right? God is preparing your comeback. You got to believe it. You know, you move your core belief system on what you believe. Like I said, your decisions make you and you make your decisions and they'll make you. So be motivated by your commitment in loving people and helping people. That's what it's all about. And see, people can tell where you stand in life just by your commitment, what you'll produce in life. The, uh, uh, if you look at Jesus in Luke 4, 18, how the anointing flowed out from him to help people. And we're made in the image of God. We're to mimic Jesus, Ephesians 5 and 1. And guess what? We have to do the same thing. We got to be able to go out there and help people. People that are opposed to themselves, people that don't like themselves, people that maybe thought they got a bad break in life, you got to go show them the love of God and show them that you care. Thank God somebody cared for you. Somebody prayed for you. I'm grateful today for the people that loved me, that cared for me, that prayed for me. Right? The people made me go to church. You know, we're living in a day a lot of times uh, uh, parents think church is optional for their children. We went to church. If you didn't feel good, well, let's go to church. We'll pray and believe God. You'll Because you know what? We wanted to go out there and play ball. Amen. We wanted to do this. We wanted to do that. Amen. Right? Amen. Oh, Marjanita, I just knew you wanted to go to church. No, I didn't always want to go to church. I wanted to go with my friends, go to the park and do things. But you know, that's why you have parents that care for you. Because your decisions today will determine your tomorrow harvest. Amen. So that's why parents, you're told to train up your children in the way they should go. And then when they're old, they won't depart. Even if they stray away, they'll come back. So you ought to thank your parents. They have you in church today to hear the living word of God. Because Matthew 4, 4 tells us man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Whatever word is coming out of God's mouth, whatever word is in this Bible, we're living it. Amen. You can choose you this day whom you will serve. Thank you, Lord. Serve God and you'll see the benefits of it. Amen. When you serve the enemy, you'll see the degradation of that. Amen. Right? Amen. That's good. Whew. Glory be to God. So commitment keeps you going toward your goal. And quitters will look at you. They'll try to distract you. They'll try to discourage you. But you can't move, be moved by them. Amen. So your commitment makes your decision before you even finish. Amen. Whatever you're going for. Maybe you're an artist and you have to finish a painting. Well, if you don't ever get started, you always make 100% of the goals you don't shoot. Amen. In basketball, you'll make them all. If you don't even shoot, you don't even try. But commitment motivates you to try. Amen. Not just for yourself, but to help other people. Because nothing is more grievous or disgusting than to see somebody that has t uh, skill, talents, abilities, intellect, and all that going for them, but they just sit on the premises instead of standing on the promises of God to help other people, to be a blessing to other people. You have a lot that God has given you. He's given you talents. He's given you gifts and abilities. But you have to be committed to want to use them, not only to be a blessing to yourself, your family, but your community, but other people out there Amen. on a global scale. Amen. Let's look at some of the examples in the Bible of commitment. Look at Abraham. 
Oh, he strayed a little bit and believed in God, but Abraham is called the friend of God. God told him, I'm going to give you a son. It took years and years, and it looked like God is not a liar. It's not happening. But when God says something, he's going to do it. When he speaks something, he's going to make it good. That's not just for Abraham sending Isaac, right, which he did. He said he's the father of many nations. What did God do? He called those things that be not as though they were. Amen. Romans 4, 17. And that's what we have to do in our life. We have to call for what we want to see instead of what we're saying. Ah, oh, you got to just call it like it is. Well, when you're in faith, when you're a new creature in Christ, you call it the way you want to see it. Amen. I call that's peace true. and love and joy and harmony in my life, in my household, in my business. I call increase. The Lord is increasing me more and more, me and my children, according to Psalms 115, verse 14. The Lord is increasing me more and more. See, that's more than enough type God that we serve, El Shaddai. He's increasing me more. Somebody need to say that right now. The Lord is increasing me more and more, me and my children. You might say, uh, I don't have any children. Well, not right now. But who knows down the road? You go ahead and say it anyway. It's already covered. Amen. You put mine in the bank. You might not need it today, but it's already in there, deposited, waiting on you to withdraw it. Amen. That's what we have to do to God's promises. Amen. Amen. Make that deposit so we can withdraw. But Abraham was promised by God to make him a father of men and nations. He said, in Isaac shall your seed be called. Wow. Ooh, glory. Abraham didn't even see Isaac. But he took God at his word. Amen. Oh, he went out there and thought Hagar was it, but that wasn't it. Amen. He was not the promise, but Isaac was a promise. Amen. And what about Daniel? Daniel's decision to pray despite his face in persecution and challenges. The king said, anybody pray? They're out of here. Wow. They're dead meat. Amen. But in spite of all that, Daniel was committed. Yes. He Amen. trusted God. And God brought him out all right. And I believe when we trust God, even though we might go through the fire, we go through some things that we don't think are what we should go through, but we always go through things. Uh, they teach us a lesson. We learn from them, the good and the not so good. We can learn a lesson, and we can help other people through their situations. But we know that Daniel came out. In Ruth's dedication to Naomi, her mother-in-law, Choosing to stay with her and embrace her faith. You know, when she could have gone back, she didn't go back. Amen. Ruth was committed. What about Esther? <laughs> Esther's courage and commitment to save her people. Right. Yeah. I mean, she went in there facing death because she didn't have an invitation from the king. She could have been toasted right there. Amen. But she knew what to do. She got herself together, and that'll preach all by itself right there. But that's what we need to do. When we're going for a job interview, oh, you might like a certain way you look, but you got to know the system. So if the system not looking like you're looking, you get the job, and then you see what you can work out later. But a lot of times, this is me. I dress like this. If I want my pants baggy, if I want three-color shades of hair, if I want this, I want that, I'm just going in there, they need to give me a job, or they ain't right. Amen. Well, it's not your job, it's their job. They have standards, they might have rules and guidelines. So if you don't agree with them, don't go. Amen. But if you're gonna submit under their authority, then you have to do what their authority say. Or start your own business, Amen. right? Amen. See, that can be a motivator to commit you to start your own business, Amen. right? Amen. But we gotta be able to be committed. A lot of frustrated quitters never achieve their true potential because of lack of commitment. Amen. How many of you today, you have a lot of potential. God gives us that potential. But are you going to be committed to fulfill the potential and fulfill the assignment that God has given you? Right? Amen. So we got to have that level of determination to accomplish our goals, whatever it takes. You don't need to quit. Don't ever quit on God. Amen. Right? Because God doesn't quit on us. Amen. Isn't that good to know? Amen. So Esther approached that king, and she went in, and he like, woo, wow, wow, wow. 
So she came on in. Amen. You know, when we come to God, he's already reached out the scepter for us to come on in. Amen. He said, though your sins be scarlet, I'll watch them white as snow. Amen. Amen. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So when we go to God, just as we are, he accepts us. Because he wants the best for us. That's why he wants us to be committed to his word, to believe his word. Right? And what about the disciples? They had commitment to leave everything behind and follow Jesus in Matthew 4, verses 18 through 22, and Mark 1, verses 16 through 20. And what about Paul's perseverance in spreading the gospel? He went through all kind of, quote, stuff, right? Shipwreck, people betraying him. Uh, a snake by everything, all the stuff he went through. But he wouldn't let that stop him, Amen. right? Amen. And what about the ultimate example of Jesus dying on the cross? Oh the God. commitment he had. He looked at us. He was already in heaven. Amen. But he saw a need that we had in mankind to save us from our sins. Amen. Thank God he didn't quit. He didn't give up. He didn't throw on the towel. But he died, John 3.16, okay? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all your soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. You know, that's the commitment of Jesus. He's telling us we got to have that kind of commitment. You know, we got to be committed to leadership. We're living in a day where people don't want responsibility. People don't want to be accountable. But we have to rise up Amen. and accept. You know, Jesus was the greatest leader that ever lived. Amen. He knew how to encourage people. He knew how to get people to follow him. Well, some of them sort of went back like Jesus, but he didn't stop Jesus from doing what he was sent here to do. Amen. Right? He said, I came to do the will of him that sent me. And sometimes, you, like I said, you might have some dark days, but you still got to be committed to the point where you move it on. Amen. You're not going to let that discourage you. Good. Jesus said to love God. You got to love God. When you love God, you're going to want to do that. Amen. And also in marriage, Ephesians 5, it talks about how you got to be committed. You, know, you take those vows and you come up, oh, yes, sir, I will, I will. Well, after the honeymoon and after a few years, are you going to still be committed? Right? When you get that job, you go, ooh, I'm making this much, this much an hour, this much a week. Woo, woo, you're so excited. But, you know, don't quit working just when you get the job. But you get commitment going, they'll see your initiative. They'll see you're wanting to excel and do great things. In Romans 12, 1, we got to get our mindset right. You know, a lot of times our issue is how we're thinking and our mindset. So it says, don't be conformed or fashioned after this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you'll prove what it is, good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Amen. So in Colossians 3, 23, it says, whatever you do, work heartily as unto the Lord. You know, don't be a men pleaser. When the boss is standing over you, you're like, ooh, I'm doing this. You're so diligent. But when the boss leaves the room, you're like, you're going back to plan, getting on your cell phone. and Right? Yeah. Right. So you have to know that what you do, do it heartily unto the Lord because he sees all. He knows all. Right? In Psalm 37 and verse 5, it says, commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him. And he will act. So that's the commitment zone that we're talking about. Uh, if you had eggs and bacon for breakfast this morning, how many of you have eaten that for breakfast before? Okay. So the egg was partially committed, came from the chicken, right? But that bacon and ham were totally committed because they had to give their lives for you to have that ham and bacon. So that's commitment. I was mailing a card the other day, and I put a stamp on it. That card and stamp go hand in hand of commitment. Amen. That stamp needs to stay on that card, that envelope, until it gets to where it's going. Amen. And that, that's the way it is in our lives. 
We need to be committed until we get to where we're going. We're not going to turn around. We're not going to quit. We're not going to throw in the towel and give up. But we have to be that committed. If you want to be on the honor roll, you got to do what champions do. you got to do what it takes to be on the honor roll. Right? Don't wait to April 30th and say, oh, I think I need some tutorial. You've been in that class since August of 23. Here it is, May, April 30th. And you're like, ah, this is hard. I don't understand geometry. I don't understand this physics. Well, find time you say it now. So I encourage you, young people, when you see you're having issues or problems and you need more time, tutorial, it doesn't mean you're dumb. It means you need more time, right, on the subject matter. Because you can learn it. You can do it. You can achieve it. But you got to be willing to maybe can't go shoot hoops this evening. Maybe can't go play Nintendo and those video games, whatever they call them now, right? You might have to go see your instructor after school to have more time. And do let your parents and guardians know where you are. Amen. So much can happen when you don't communicate, when you're not committed to be a good student. I see some of the young people going, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, Amen. right? Because they want you to hang with wise people. Because it talks about in Proverbs, when you run with wise people, you'll be wise. Amen. But when you run with fools, your life will fall to pieces. Amen. So that's in the Bible. So we don't want any of your lives falling to pieces. Amen. We want you to be the best, have the best, and do the best as God has created you to do. So we're talking about living in the commitment zone. How would it look like if you were uncommitted? What if God was uncommitted to us? I don't think he would have sent Jesus, do you? We don't even want to think about that. Unthinkable, right? But when he hastens to perform his word, when he wants to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, according to Ephesians 3.20, that's the kind of God that we're talking about. Amen. He wants to do it in our lives, right? right? Amen. You know, his name is good. Why is his name good? Because his word is good. Amen. God honors his word above his own name. Amen. Because John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, God's word is always good. Amen. He's from everlasting to everlasting. That's God. Amen. So when we talk about the zone of commitment, we can look at our Heavenly Father and see how committed he is. He honors his word. There's integrity. He said the integrity of the upright shall lead them and guide them, right? Amen. So we need a good name if we're to mimic him. So do the things that gives you a good name. Amen. You know, That's if you don't want to be killed, don't you kill. Amen. If you don't want somebody to steal from you, don't you steal from nobody. Amen. See, a lot of things are simple. We like, I'm all mixed up. You're not mixed up. Because before you take somebody else's life, you're not taking your own life. Amen. You know, everybody, oh, mental, mental. And that could be some validity. But God tells us, according to the word, to renew our minds to the word of God. Amen. The Bible says, thou shalt not kill. Right? Amen. Thou should not steal. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't do those things. Right? Amen. But if we do do them, you know, you fall into, the, you know, a total little white lie, whatever, it's still a lie. Right? right. He said, we confess our sins, that God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But God wants us to be free. He said, for the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus makes us free from the law of sin and death. Amen. He wants us to be free from those things that will hurt us and derail us you, and, 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 and kick us uh, down in our lives. Right? Because God is committed to his word. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word will never pass away. Amen. And I love it because Jesus Christ, he says he's a friend that sticks closer to us than a brother. Thank you. You don't want an uncommitted parent. You need something, and they just, oh, I hadn't cooked in 20 years. Well, how are you going to eat? How are you going to stay alive? You want a parent that tells you the truth. Amen. You don't ask your plants, you need some water? They know what's good for you. And maybe you have some parents that made some mistakes or whatever. We still got to forgive them. Amen. We still got to be committed to walk the love walk in our own lives. Amen. Amen. Maybe they need prayer. That's Pray true. for your parents. It's young people. Sometimes we just think it's all about us. Give me, give me, give me. My name is Jimmy. But you know, you can pray for your friend that's cutting up at school. 
You know, there's a lot of bullying and things that are going on. A lot of them just need love. Amen. They maybe need attention. You don't know what homes they're coming from. So don't just put them down or fight them because they're acting bad. Amen. You know, pray for them. Amen. Maybe go over and give a kind word with a friend, maybe not by yourself, but take a buddy with you and talk to them. What about an uncommitted teacher? You seen Abbott Elementary? I love the principal. Isn't she? But she'll just come in. I'm working on my online sales. Oh, what y'all doing over there? Just go ahead and do it. But it's so cute. It's, it's so cute. It's based out of Philly, too. Uh, but anyway, an uncommitted teacher. You want a teacher that loves you so much and want to teach you and, and, and show you love and care about you. Amen. You know those teachers we used to call hard. We didn't want their classes. Right. I'm like, I don't want to go here. We spread the word. Don't take it from him. Amen. Don't take it from her. Right? Amen. But you know, those are the teachers that really cared about you. So when you went to upper grades or college and furthered your education, you wouldn't be in a stupid like, huh? One plus five is what? Three cube is what? But see, they cared about you. They loved. Sometimes love has to be tough. But it's also tender, too. Uh, uncommitted in the realm of sports, baseball. We're throwing the ball to first and nobody's over there. Amen. We see a fly ball coming out and we're looking like, I don't know who's going to catch that. Amen. You know what I mean? And what about football? You're right there in the red zone. See, I know what the red zone is. And you're like looking up in the stands. That could have been your touchdown, right? But the commitment zone will let you go ahead and score, right? And right, right. And what about basketball? Oh, they're passing the ball to you, and you all like, ooh, I see her. I see you, 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 you're, not, you're spaced out. You're distracted, right? So you got to stay hooked up to the commitment zone. What about a grocery store? You go in, you're ready to buy your groceries, and nobody's there. Nobody's at the counter, or maybe in a shopping mall or whatever, or your computer breaks down, you don't have anywhere to take it to. An uncommitted doctor, oh my God. They're about to do surgery on somebody, and they're drinking coffee, eating peanuts, or whatever. Peanuts don't cold with coffee. They're drinking a Coca-Cola, right? That goes with the peanuts. But anyway, an accountant. You know, it's tax time here in America, and maybe it's time for your taxes, but they're uncommitted. Like, April what? Oh, I get around to them. No, you don't want people that are uncommitted in your life is a point that I'm making. So we shouldn't be uh, uncommitted in our lives. Because you know what? Everyone in here is somebody's answer to a prayer. You might not think it. You might not look like you are. But you are. You're somebody. So you can reach people that I can't reach. And maybe I'll see people reach people that you can't meet. So you're significant, you have purpose, God loves you, and he wants you to live in the commitment zone. Somebody said, bingo. bingo. We got to believe, yeah, believe, believe it. We got to initiate it. We got to nurture, nurture it. Believe God, believe God. to go, go and do, and do. cause that's the two words we got out of the word God. And then obey, be willing. Don't look at your circumstances. But trust God and live in that commitment zone. Give the Lord a hand clap. Woo, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Somebody said, for the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. I tell you what. Thank God for his word. Well, thank God for that wonderful message today. And I want to tell you what a blessing it is. And I trust it has been a source of inspiration encouragement, blessing, and practical instruction for everyday living. Praise God. But you know, it all begins by establishing a relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever you are, wherever you are, I want you to bow your head and pray this prayer as we go boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. And pray this, dear God in heaven, I come to you realizing that in my life I have sinned and come short of your glory. I repent of all of my sin, and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who died on the cross and shed his blood to save me from all of my sin, is the Lord of my life. And I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, that I might be justified, just as if I'd never sinned. 
Lord Jesus, come into my heart and live in me now. I believe that I receive eternal life through Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior, that I am now made a new creation in Christ Jesus, born again of the Spirit of God, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. If you prayed that prayer with us today, congratulations. Welcome into the family of God. You're now officially a citizen of the kingdom of heaven with all the rights, privileges, practices, and principles thereunto.